Starting in ASP.NET Core 3, Razor views are pre-compiled by default. This is great most of the time, but can be a little bit frustrating for developer workflow. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at view pre-compilation in Racer Pages. Yeah, so this is something that I kind of missed in the, the release notes, I suppose, that um, by default now, starting in 3.0, all our Razor views end up getting pre-compiled at build time, which is, it's a really good thing for, for, for performance. It means that the startup time of the application is a lot shorter. Uh, but the problem that I was running into is that I'm really used to being able to just make changes to my Razor views as I'm developing here. So I just have a very simple ASP.NET Core 3 app here. Let's just confirm that this is actually an ASP.NET Core 3 app. Yes, 3.1. And I'm used to coming in here and just making a change, say to, let's say I wanted to move my message here. So here's my app running. Uh, make a change here. I'm going to pull this up into the into my h1 tag and get rid of the paragraph. I'm used to me coming in here and just hitting refresh and getting the new page rendered, but that's not happening because what's happening is it's still just using that pre-compiled one that's uh, that's part of the assemblies that were built at build time. So. A couple things you need to do to re-enable that for for your developer workflow. The first one is to go and add a NuGet package. And that package is called ASP.NET Core, Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.MVC.Razor.Runtime compilation. Just rolls off the tongue. Yep, totally. So we're just going to install that. And of course, accept all of these things because we have no choice if we want to use it. And then we just have one change to make over in our startup here. And that is that after we call add razor pages, we need to call dot add razor runtime compilation. Hmm. So that'll re enable the behavior that we were kind of familiar with in MBC and everything Razor related over the last many, many years that we can go and make a change to our markup. Refresh the page and see the results of that. It takes a little while because of course it's recompiling that view, but we do get the results there and it's faster than you know, stopping the entire application and booting it up again. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing that we have to be careful with there is that we don't actually want this. Um, we probably don't want this enabled all the time. We would probably only want it enabled when we're in our development environment. So uh, the trick there is <clears throat> to use the iWeb hosting environment to, to test if we're in, in the dev environment, but we can't just pass that in here to this um, configure services method because that one can only really take in the service collection. So we can pass it into the startup. So this is the way I've been doing this is passing in environment here and then much like we do with configuration, just creating a, a web hosting environment. Actually, it's going to be private. Oh my goodness. Having a hard time typing in the new year here. So what I do here is just say this is a R MVC builder. The the type of this thing that add razor pages returns is an IMVC builder. Okay. It's the same thing if we added uh, controllers with views, we'd get an MVC builder back. And then I'm just going to say if env dot is development. And I'm going to do 
MVC Builder. Add your own time compilation. And now that will only get enabled when I'm in my development environment, and I don't need to worry about uh, the performance impact of that when I'm in uh, staging or production. Sounds like a good plan. One simple trick to get that runtime compilation back for your developer workflow. Awesome. Great. Well, wow. you know you can make a pretty good uh, clickbait title out of that. One simple <laughs> trick to do. <laughs> You won't believe number six. <laughs> you just need to come up with some less surprising examples of things that we can have for the other numbers. Yeah. That feels like a lot of work. I feel like BuzzFeed would just do one thing and be done with that. I'm not going to put the effort in to come up with other stuff. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. Uh, remember to like, comment, share, uh, even if you're in a development environment. We'll see everybody in the next episode. Cheers. Bye.